Hello everyone, today is 6th of July, Saturday, so I hope you have a wonderful day and a great weekend. Now it's uh, 20 past 9 in the morning Moscow time. I'm Levan Gudadze and this is my first update for the day in which I will share all the main news that are making headlines in Russian media outlets and Russian language pages on different internet platforms. And there are quite a few very significant developments and uh, news that I'd like to share with you for this moment. And once again, I will start with elections, this time in Iran, because uh, yesterday there was a second tour of presidential elections and we have some results here. According to, uh, according to Ria Novosti's report, latest uh, information is that a candidate from uh, reformist wing in Iran Masoud Pezeshkian received majority of the votes, uh, 16,384,000 votes, to be more precise, and uh, he is elected president uh, of Iran now. On second place is a candidate from conservative winger Said Jalili. He received a uh, little over 13,500,000 votes, and... Uh, well, even though I'm not really uh, expert of internal uh, politics of Iran, in my personal opinion, it is good that uh, reformist or m moderate uh, candidate uh, will become a president of Iran because hopefully he will uh, be focused more on diplomacy. While uh, it is, uh, in my opinion, a risk that conservative uh, candidate would... Uh, uh, would be more focused on on using force and uh, this is very important uh, because uh, you know my take on the western ruling classes intentions when it comes to middle east i believe they want to provoke regional war to shut down navigation in the persian gulf and uh, through Hormuz Strait, so that they will cut off china from uh, middle eastern energy sources and therefore i expect more and more provocations against iran and uh, if uh, Pezeshkian, reformist, is in uh, charge, uh, is, a, is, a, is a president, hopefully Tehran will always uh, act uh, cautiously, cautiously, not to, not to play in hands of Western ruling class by overreacting on, on certain developments, while conservative candidate would probably overreact. So, therefore, uh, I think uh, this is good news. This is good news that uh, uh, Pezeshkian is, uh, will be next president of Iran. Although, only time will tell, you know, uh, my understanding of the situation may not be uh, correct. Who knows? Who knows? Time will tell. But this is the, mm, this is the information, by the way. Pezeshkian will be next president of uh, Iran. And of course, we have to talk about uh, Orban's visit to Moscow once again, because uh, as I mentioned in my yesterday's updates, uh, Western ruling class went in full meltdown mode. They went crazy, by the way. Uh, there was very strong uh, criticism of uh, Orban from uh, unelected bureaucrats uh, in Brussels, unelected EU bureaucrats uh, from some political figures among EU member states, by the way, EU and NATO member states, uh, they were quite critical of Orban, uh, also US, uh, e just about everybody, with very few exceptions. Uh, and uh, this is quite a uh, quite illustration, isn't it, that Orban came to Moscow on a peace trip, and he, he got criticized for that by Western ruling class, Western ruling elites, and uh, and I guess this is a good enough reason for Western societies, at least in, in, in theory, to think again what kind of people they are supporting. Really, because uh, either really are for, for war. I refuse to believe that Western societies, majority of the Western societies, really want uh, this war to continue in Ukraine or I really want a third world war to happen. I don't think majority of the 
uh, Western public is suicidal. And therefore, I mean, they should really think uh, better about uh, people that they are allowing to be in position of power with their actions or inaction in some cases. But anyways, when it comes to Orban's visit to, to Moscow, well, it was a peace mission, obviously. And during this visit, Orban called uh, Moscow and Kiev to find ways to... Uh, to end their hostilities and to, to, to come up with a peaceful solution to this uh, crisis. Uh, there were rumors, by the way, here in Russia and probably uh, outside of Russia also, that Orban may come to Moscow with some messages from uh, Zelensky, from Kyiv regime or Western ruling class. And uh, on this rumor, we have an answer. Aid of Russian President Yuri Ushakov stated that uh, Orban did not uh, bring any messages. To the Putin, he came with his own uh, proposals, and the Russian president listened to him. They exchanged uh, opinions. It was a good conversation. It was a good conversation, and uh, well, after a meeting, uh, they had a press conference. And during this uh, press conference, Russian president uh, once again stated that uh, uh, Russia is interested in a complete end of the uh, Ukraine conflict. Not in some uh, uh, temporary ceasefire or freezing of the conflict, which will allow the regime and, uh, and the Western ruling class to rearm and reinforce Russian enemies. But Russia is interested in a, in a true end of the conflict, true peace. And this uh, information on RT is exactly about that. Let's go through this news. Russia wants to fully resolve the Ukrainian conflict rather than just agreeing uh, ceasefire or freezing their hostilities. President Vladimir Putin has said the statement came after Putin met with the Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban in Moscow on Friday. Orban traveled to the Russian capital to discuss ways of finding peaceful and diplomatic resolution to the conflict. Speaking at the joint press conference following their meeting, Putin stated that um, there should be no uh, ceasefire or some kind of uh, pause that uh, the Kyiv regime could use to recover losses, regroup and rearm. Russia is in favor of a complete and final end of the conflict. Putin noted, however, that the conflict can only end once a number of conditions are met. Specifically, the Russian leader stressed that Turkey uh, must withdraw its forces from Donbass as well as the former Ukrainian regions of Zaporozhye and Kherson all of which officially become part of Russia after voting in public referendums. So, Russian president once again, uh, once again, uh, uh, reiterated that uh, they are, uh, Moscow is still open, Moscow is still open for uh, uh, meaning, meaningful uh, negotiations. Russian peace proposal that Russian president himself outlined uh, a few weeks ago is open still, and uh, that peace proposal uh, had there some, some, some basics in it. It was a very generous, in my personal opinion, uh, offer from Moscow, according to which uh, the regime is withdrawing forces from new Russian regions, uh, that, that being Kherson, Zaporozhye, DPR and LPR. Then the regime is recognizing Russian sovereignty over their territories of uh, uh, Sevastopol and Crimea, Kherson, Zaporozhye, DPR, LPR regions, sir, and uh, meaningful peak stocks will take place uh, as a result. Uh, and uh, when Kyiv regime recognized Russian sovereignty over these uh, new regions, the uh, rest of the world uh, will do the same because they will have no reason not to. And uh, Ukraine will be obligated to stay neutral. And some uh, nuances will be also uh, discussed during that peace talk about, uh, about securities uh, guarantees for, uh, for uh, Ukraine. And many other topics. But uh, to start meaningful peace talks, first of all, the regime has to stop hostilities and withdraw 
its military personnel from these uh, new Russian regions. Kherson, Zaporozhye, DPR, LPR. Um, so, will they do this? Of course not. Of course not. But Russian president was very serious, it's, it seems like, because he several times already spoke about this proposal, including yesterday. And if he was uh, just playing this geopolitical chess, he would not mention this uh, proposal, peace proposal from Moscow so many times. And it is, by the way, very generous proposal um, because it's allow, it allows the Kyiv regime to save over tens and potentially hundreds of thousands of uh, lives of the Kyiv regime's military personnel and statehood of uh, Ukraine. That's why it's a very generous proposal. Otherwise, if hostilities continue, uh, well, I don't think uh, there will be much left from the statehood of uh, Ukraine once this conflict will end. And the uh, and, uh, well, number of casualties on, on part of the regime will, will only continue to rise. Uh, yesterday I reported about Russian Defense Ministry's uh, information that just in this week, by the way, the regime lost uh, more than 13,000 military personnel killed and wounded just in one week. And this, uh, this is happening week on, you know, every single week. There is no way the regime can sustain such high losses. The uh, regime's defense lines are crumbling. Uh, almost every other day, we are receiving information about uh, breakthroughs of the Russian forces in different sectors of the front line. And we have every indicator to assume that... Uh, in a couple of months time um, in a couple of months time uh, we will see true beginning of the end of the key regime forces as a more or less capable entity cracks already have appeared so yes there was an interesting interesting uh, diplomatic trip uh, from uh, from orban sides uh, Russian and uh, Hungarian leaders exchanged their opinions. Although, as I mentioned, by the way, Western ruling class went uh, full <laughs> meltdown mode. And, uh, well, Kyiv regime also, by the way, Kyiv regime also, uh, probably they, they feel themselves like involved to, to criticize Hungary, to, you know, to act as if they mean, if, if there anybody cares about their opinion. And for example, foreign ministry, uh, foreign ministry of uh, Ukraine, uh, stated that they are outraged over Orban's visit to Moscow. The Ukrainian foreign ministry has complained on its official website that Orban's decision to travel to Moscow was, and then quote, made by the Hungarian side without approval or coordination with Ukraine. Since when? Hungary needs any approval from uh, Kyiv regime on anything at all, anything. But um, I mean, you tell me how out of touch with reality these uh, clowns in the Kyiv regime really are. These these cheap puppets of the Western ruling class that they think that they can talk with Hungary with this language that you know you don't get my approval. Who the hell are you, for God's sake, man, to to speak to Hungary this way? Unbelievable, man. And uh, that's news agency. And by the way, by the way, when you know to summarize, to summarize all this uh, trip of the of the Hungary's prime minister. Unfortunately, I am skeptical that uh, something uh, concrete will will be reached or or come out from this uh, meeting. Uh, Hungary's prime minister try for sure, and it will go down in history. 100% uh, that uh, there was a uh, very few politicians uh, during these uh, critical times in Europe that were uh, doing whatever they could to de-escalate situation and uh, and leadership of Hungary definitely will be mentioned among those very few people that were on the right side of history and that were trying to de-escalate and same goes for same goes for um, leadership of uh, current leadership of Slovakia because um, uh, Roberto Fico commented 
Prime Minister of Slovakia commented on uh, Hungary's Prime Minister's visit in, in, in Russia and said that if uh, he had no health issues, and uh, as we all know, he's recovering, still recovering from a uh, relatively recent uh, attack on him. Uh, he said if not health issue, he would be happy to uh, travel to Moscow together with uh, Viktor Ol Orban. Uh, another rebel, by the way, another rebel uh, in uh, among leadership of uh, Europe that is on right side of history that cares about national interests of uh, his people and his country more than uh, geopolitical agenda of the Brussels or, or Western ruling class globalists. I mean, whoever they are. But yet again, uh, uh, Western ruling class went in full meltdown mode and the uh, well, White House also criticized also criticized uh, Orban. Uh, for example, press secretary of the White House, uh, Karin Jean Pierre, stated that uh, Orban's visit to Moscow will not help uh, to promote peace. Uh, <laughs> how ironic, isn't it? The US just announced a couple of days ago that they, they will provide the regime with an additional military aid package for two point, over $2 billion. And, uh, and press secretary of the White House, while perfectly well being that, while being perfectly well informed what U.S. does, what U.S. administration does to prolong this conflict and not to allow peace to occur. And how ironic is it? It is that White House's um, press secretary, this Karin Jean Pierre, is criticizing leader of Hungary for true attempts to. Uh, de-escalate to, to to promote peace you know and uh, and bring this conflict to the end unbelievable man world world is going crazy really world is going crazy man this great newspaper is reporting that uh, nebesnia by the way vasily nebesnia permanent representative of the russian federation in un stated that uh, well uh, maybe maybe Western ruling class is uh, against peace uh, in Ukraine right now, against a uh, peaceful resolution, but uh, developments on the ground will force them to change their positions in a fairly short time, and uh, he's absolutely correct. He's absolutely correct. Uh, eventually, eventually, Western ruling class will have no option but to acknowledge objective reality they will be forced to come to their senses and and realize what is really happening uh what is the real situation they will be forced to come out from this uh this bubble that they are in uh, anyways uh, let's continue art is reporting that uh, le pen pledges to block troop deployment to ukraine france uh, france is a right-wing national rally party will block potential troop deployments to Ukraine and uh, bar Kiev from using French supplied weaponry to strike Russian soil should it um, emerge victorious in the parliamentary elections and uh, secure the office of Prime Minister or of the country. Marie Le Pen, the former longtime leader of the party, has uh, stated, well, interesting statement, of course, although uh, I said uh, quite a few times before, and uh, I will repeat if I may, that I see quite a number of U-turns uh, in Europe when it comes to politicians and their statements and their actions. And therefore, I don't take no statements from uh, European politicians on uh, uh, as a, you know... Um, I don't take no statements uh, on their face value. Uh, there's some proofs are needed. Some proofs are needed because, after all, uh, uh, it was a uh, colleague of the Le Pen and potential future prime minister of uh, France, uh, current leader of the this national ra rally party, who said there about like two weeks ago during one of their interviews that. Uh, um, 
if they will win these elections, then uh, they would not be against deploy the deliveries of the weapons and their ammunition to the Kyiv regime. So which one is then? Le Pen is saying that uh, they will block deployment of French troops and they will prohibit Kyiv to use uh, French weapons on Russian soil. But they will still send weapons, right? So they are not for peace then. Am I understand correctly? They are not for peace. They will still send the weapons. They will just play this game that you know, we are not allowing to use these weapons against uh, you know, Russian soil. What the hell are you talking about? So therefore, by the way, I have no trust, man. I have no trust in these people, man. And uh, by the way, also one note is that most likely Macron's coalition and the uh, bloc of uh, leftist, uh, leftist parties uh, as a result of their uh, cooperation, probably they will manage to gain majority. So I don't think uh, Le Pen's party will have a majority. Maybe exactly because of these uh, flip-flop positions that we will one day, you know, we are sending weapons, other day oh, we don't, uh, then we send troops, uh, another day we don't. Uh, come on, man, come on. You are for peace or you are for war. And uh, I, I did not see any statement from leadership of this uh, party that they are against war. And they will block any deliveries of the weapons on or money to these uh, terrorists and the Nazis. Did they ever say that the regime is a terrorist and Nazis? They did not. At least I did not see any news about it. So, these people are fake, by the way. Marie Le Pen, her party, that all of them are fake. I don't trust them. And French society will uh, realize that in fairly short time, that those so-called politicians, they are, they are fake. Uh, Task News Agency is reporting that uh, Vladimir Rogov, head of Russian NGO, we are with Russia, that is actively operating in the uh, Zaporozhye region, stated that Kyiv regime forces yet again strike in Energodar in Zaporozhye nuclear power plant direction and they destroyed the uh, Luch substation. Uh, this is the second substation that Kyiv regime forces destroyed in the last uh, 10 days, I believe. And uh, it seems uh, clear to me that the Kyiv regime is uh, preparing nuclear disaster. They are destroying lines of uh, uh, power supplies to Energodar and uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant. Uh, which is uh, clearly indicating that the uh, key regime and, uh, and their Western masters. We should always keep in mind that there is no way Zelensky or his criminal associates will conduct any strikes against uh, uh, Zaporozhye nuclear power plant, or there is no way they will jeopardize security of the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant without permission from the Washington. One should always keep in mind that Washington is involved in this uh, nuclear terrorism. And the European public should be, you know, I mean, I know they would not wake up. I know, I, and I understand that uh, Western, uh, majority of the Western public is in, in such influence of the propaganda of the, of the and fa false narratives of the Western ruling class that there is no way they will wake up. Uh, but uh, until, at least until something catastrophic will happen. And I'm afraid there, I mean, situation is getting there and one of the catastrophes may be Zaporozhye nuclear power plant disaster because the Kyiv regime clearly is uh, jeopardizing security of their ZMPP and the orders of Washington so they don't care in Washington if anything happens to ZMPP well theoretically it is possible that radioactive uh, uh, elements will reach uh, US. Uh, it depends on winds, obviously. But I mean, Europe is uh, is uh, is going to be in trouble. That's for sure. Because I mean, continental Europe, Western European states, uh, or Eastern European states. I mean, they're right there 
next to this ZMPP. Not as far away as the US. But yet again, uh, uh, I'm quite sure Western media will not even report about this uh, nuclear terrorism of the Q regime and Washington and London. RT is reporting that, uh, well, Exactly on this uh, subject, by the way, of, uh, of uh, possible disaster for humanity, head of uh, Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, made statement that there are some elements in the West that want a World War III. And uh, it is hard to disagree with him, isn't it? It's just too obvious. It's just too obvious that there are some elements among Western ruling class that clearly pushing this world towards World War III. And you know why? Because they know there is no way, there is no way they're gonna stop emerging of the multipolar world, which means that no way they're gonna be able to <coughs> maintain dominance over the world. And they cannot live with this. They cannot accept uh, changes that are happening. They want to be only dominant force in this world. That's it. And because they are mentally sick, mentally ill people, probably they will push uh, towards World War Three, and will uh, and and will jeopardize uh, well-being of entire humanity. Let's go through this news, anyways. Uh, certain Western powers appear hell-bent on turning the Ukrainian conflict into an all-out world war. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan has stated, he added, that uh, he hoped peace would prevail in uh, spite of this. Uh, speaking to reporters on the board of the uh, presidential jet, as he returned uh, from uh, Shanghai Cooperation Organization Summit in Astana, Kazakhstan, on Friday, Erdogan lamented that unfortunately there are countries and elements in the west that uh, uh, expose uh, an approach which uh, paves the way for uh, world war three so basically there are some some forces in the west that want pushing this world towards a uh, world war he blames uh, arms manufacturers for pushing their own agenda as uh, Western powers continue to funnel military aid to Ukraine. It is obvious that uh, arms uh, dealers need money and the markets for arms uh, dealers is the West, Erdogan said. Well, it's not just mar uh, arms manufacturers, isn't it? The military industrial complex plays a big role, obviously. But all these uh, companies, by the way, all these... Uh, uh, giant corporations in uh, Western military industrial complex are run by very few people in reality. If you trace the money, you will find out that behind all these uh, corporations are just a handful of people. <coughs> that's that's the group that I call Western ruling class. That are behind of uh, vast majority of these multinational corporations. That's the real decision makers. And uh, those people, many of them, I mean, they are generational uh, criminal families, royal families, uh, non-royal families, uh, you know, clans, basically, that were robbing this world for uh, last, uh, at least last three to five hundred years. That's what is happening. And they get used to those people uh those clans get used to be dominant force in this world and they cannot cope with the objective reality they cannot face it that uh situation is changing and they have to respect now other people's opinions also other people also other countries other societies they, they just cannot cope with that because uh, they don't know what respect is they don't know what diplomacy is. They know nothing, basically. And that's why they are pushing towards World War III. They will 
rather destroy entire world but not share any but not face uh, reality that you know they have to respect now uh, other people also they are sick by the way western ruling class and their puppets they are sick mentally ill individuals that are pushing this world towards their uh, total destruction it is what it is and uh, to continue dear friends let me take a minute or two and uh, and uh, advertise my channel if i may i don't have uh, advertise uh from nobody right i would like to advertise uh, some companies and by the way if uh, if by chance uh, i know my videos are watching about one percent uh, uh, i checked yesterday statistics and uh from all the views that I get in the last 28 days, there was only one point something percent, one point three percent or something uh, views from Russia. And uh, well, if among these Russian viewers there is a businessman, for God's sake, that uh, has some business in I don't know tourism industry or uh, in some some industry that uh, advertising on my channel will be interesting or or, or uh, useful because uh 98 99 percent of views on my channel are from outside of russia and maybe this businessman will consider to sponsor my program that would be nice uh, yes that would be nice uh, but well uh, if uh, i if i did not have any advertise before now it's hardly likely that I will get any, you know, advertising contract from now on. So therefore, at least I will advertise my own channel. And dear friends, um, if you like uh, this channel, if you think that this channel has potential, uh, not just uh, this channel on YouTube or Rumble, but uh, entire media project of mine. I have Telegram channel also and. Uh, uh, second channels on YouTube and Rumble, although I did not uh, publish there anything for quite a while. But uh, yet again, if you think there is if, that there is a potential here, uh, and if you think uh, I do some interesting work, then uh, then uh, please consider to uh, to support with uh, with donations, and you can donate through PayPal or Boosty. By the way, this is Boosty. Once I you know when I get cancelled on uh, Buy Me Coffee. After that, I, I'm trying to promote this Boosty, uh, my page on Boosty. Uh, I know some members of our community find it difficult to operate on this page. Uh, I don't know why, because uh, I mean, I'm operating here quite easily here. Uh, but, uh, but anyways, anyways, uh, you can, if you want to, and if you can, you can supporter with donations through paypal or boosty by the way and same time same time uh, uh, I mean, you can you can subscribe to my patreon page or my page on boosty on patreon by the way i have uh, uh, plenty of extra content uh, yesterday i had two extra videos uh, and i'm publishing those videos on boosty also by the way so if you don't like patreon for whatever reason you can subscribe on boosty and you will have access to these videos uh, anyway so yesterday i published uh, this video for example reaction video on a report on bbc and uh, uh, deutsche welle about uh, shanghai cooperation organization summit um, and uh, i also published um, some non-news non-political content yesterday from pavilletskaya plaza uh, in in the central part of Moscow, relatively new uh, shopping mall. I I I went there first time and uh, I made short video just to you know something different. And uh, I'm trying to have this this extra content on a regular basis um, as my thank to members of our Patreon and Boosty community for their support. And uh, and yes. Uh, if uh, if somehow i will i will have if our community on patreon let me say this way will double 
that will give me opportunity to uh, that will definitely give me opportunity to do some more and uh, and better uh, i can move close to moscow i may be able to create some some uh, studio uh, i can I, I might deal with uh, some technical issues that i'm experiencing time to time so yes yes uh, I don't have sponsors, I don't have advertising, my channel on YouTube is not monetized, so it's, uh, as I said, man, this, this project is completely subscriber funded, and uh, if you can, please consider to uh, to support, to subscribe on my Patreon and Boosty, by the way, and uh, also, of course, you can donate uh, through PayPal and uh, Boosty. This platform is quite unique, Boosty, in this regard, because you can donate through Boosty, <laughs> right now i only have six paid subscribers on boosty you can donate you can uh, subscribe on channel you can choose level of subscriptions it's uh, similar to patreon this in this regard when it comes to subscriptions and uh, it's similar to buy me coffee also in some ways because uh, you can donate also through this platform so yes all the links by the way under this video in the description box and in the pinned uh, comment sorry that this uh, advertising of my channels took uh, maybe too long, but uh, you know, I'm trying. By the way, I'm trying. I want to uh, transform this uh, small project of mine in something little bigger and a little more useful for uh, for our community. And uh, and the uh, only way I'll, I'll be able to do this is uh, is through support of of the community. Uh, it's just what it is anyways let's continue with the with the news and uh, that's new said news report here that bulgaria by the way leadership of bulgaria uh, intends to uh, initiate to in, in, intends to uh, go to nato summit in washington that will take place from uh, 9th to 11th of uh, july uh, this this month uh, to go there with initiative to start uh, talk talks peace talks between Moscow and uh, uh, Kiev to initiate these talks uh, very surprising uh, step from uh, Bulgaria's leadership this was stated by acting prime minister of uh, Bulgaria uh, Dimitar uh, Glavchev and uh, when I see this news I was a little surprised because uh, Bulgaria was acting extremely anti-Russian and Russophobic Bulgarian leadership by the way for decades now for decades really and uh, now they are talking peace uh, really i mean what happened there what happened in, in bulgaria uh, i don't know uh, i find this news uh, strange because i i no longer expect uh, from bulgaria any positive steps really that's how disgraceful governments of bulgaria have been for uh, decades as i said since the collapse of Soviet Union, really. And, uh, well, now this information, okay. Okay, let's see what is behind this uh, proposal. Uh, although, of course, Bulg you know, even if uh, Bulgarian delegation will come up with this initiative to, to uh, about peace talks between Moscow and Kiev, I think they will be shut down straight away. They will be shut down straight away and they wouldn't be allowed to talk about peace in a NATO summit. In Washington, by the way, no way. But anyway, it's interesting. Interesting. <coughs> Tash News Agency is reporting that the President of uh, U.S. Uh, president of U.S. Uh, Joe Biden uh, stated that uh, he is uh, not uh, going out from the presidential race. He is not leaving presidential race. He was very clear. I watch video. And he was uh, shouting that he's, you know, he's staying in a race and not going nowhere. Okay. Okay. Uh, we will see. We will see because uh, we also have uh, information here that uh, quite a large group of uh, donors of the Democrats um, calling now Biden to step, step aside. Uh, 
And this was reported by Washington Post. And according to this newspaper, this propaganda outlet of the West, 168 big donors of the Democrats already signed up for later to establishment of the Democrats. So this game is playing, by the way. Game is now played in uh, in US. Biden was set up to fail from very beginning. That's why they agreed on these uh, debates and stuff. So he failed as it was expected. And now we are seeing this media op uh, preparation of the ground to replace Biden with uh, someone else. Uh, initially, I said there uh, Three names. Uh, one was, uh, uh, but you know, five of Barack Obama, Michelle Obama. Another, this Gavin Newsom, uh, governor of California. He is a devastating governor for California itself, but he has some connections, and that's why I was thinking he might be chosen because he will act as a good puppet. Clearly. Uh, and uh, I was mentioning Serdar person. I forget. And I was saying, yes, maybe Clinton will be also, Hillary Clinton will be also nominated. <coughs> Let's see. Let's see. But Biden most likely will be replaced. He may say that he's not going nowhere, but uh, I mean, it's not up to him, really. He will never even understand or is he president or not i mean that's a sad reality of political situation in in us and the uh, and the system in in us conversant newspaper is reporting that uh, well uk we know now names of their new foreign minister of uk uh defense minister finance minister and of course we know name of the new prime minister i i reported about it yesterday so Keir Starmer uh, is a new prime minister uh, obviously leader of this uh, this um, labor party also by the way uh, defense minister is uh, john healy uh, David uh, Lemmy is a foreign minister of UK and uh, Rachel Reeves is a, is a finance minister. Some names from the new cabinet. Uh, I have no idea who these people are. I don't care about finance minister of the UK, but a foreign minister of UK, of UK David uh, Lemmy and uh, defense minister John Healy. I don't know who these people are. Um, from what I read, they were in shadow government on the same positions. That's all I know about these people. Let's see, man. Just give it a couple of days and they will come out with some crazy statements and we will uh, we will realize that they are no any different than previous ones. You know, this report that US, by the way, postpones the military exercises with the, with the Georgia. <coughs> some good news, really for Georgia and South Southern Caucasus region. Uh, so let me translate. Uh, let me translate this. Uh. So United States uh, has uh, postponed joint military exercises with Georgia due to a review of bilateral relations. The Pentagon announced the United States and then quote the United States has initiated a comprehensive review of bilateral US Georgian relations. As a part of this review, the United States will indefinitely postpone the noble partner exercises. Statement from Pentagon said, Okay, stay away from Georgia, Pentagon. That's the best you can do, really. And stay away from Southern Caucasus region. That's it. That's it. No one cares about military exercises with the, with the Pentagon. No one needs that. Especially in that region. So, and this is of course, by the way, a reaction of the Washington on recent uh, developments in Georgia when the ruling party adopted this law about foreign agents. And uh, now, by the way, uh, I believe uh, there is a work in the parliament to to ban uh, LGBTQ propaganda also. 
and uh, of course uh, globalists and neolibs and that kind of uh, crap uh, uh, not gonna like it uh, also so you know they will they will retaliate against georgia washington was behind all these destabilization attempts that we see in recent years in georgia georgia's prime minister even stated openly that washington was financing at least two attempts to conduct regime change in georgia so relationships really are deteriorating uh, because finally finally georgia has government that realizes that washington is not friend u.s ruling elites are not uh, friends of anybody they are not friends for u.s citizens for god's sake why would they be <laughs> friends or any good for anybody else <laughs> let's be real here U.S. ruling class don't cares about U.S. citizens. They spend 200 billion on the Kyiv regime, right? Uh, according to reports that I see, by the way, with 200 billion, uh, issue of homelessness could be resolved in U.S. Uh, issue of uh, uh, this uh, drug pandemic could be tackled on a serious scale. Border issue could be resolved. And after all, people will get clean water, for God's sake. There are some cities in U.S. that you cannot get clean water. Nothing to be said uh, about other stuff, crumbling infrastructure and, and so on. Yes, U.S. is the richest country in this world, still, undoubtedly. Uh, or at least one of the richest ones. But... It do, does not change the fact that U.S. ruling class don't really cares about its own citizens. So why would anybody in this world will think that they will be any good for uh, anybody else? So finally, Georgian government, Georgia has a government that are realizing that all these uh, Western ruling elites really care is to use, abuse, and sacrifice your country. That's all they care about. You know, even if in the process, all of you will die there. And therefore, Tbilisi is fighting back against the Western influence, which is good, by the way, which is definitely good. Uh, they have to be careful, 100%, because uh, Western ruling class is a dangerous enemy, probably most dangerous enemy that Georgia ever had. But uh, if, if uh, Tbilisi will act uh, cautiously, if they will make some practical, pragmatic moves in terms of politics, uh, regional politics also, in terms of relationships with Russia, Georgia will, will go through these hard times. Russia will help, for sure. And by the way, Georgia and Russia had their centuries of relationships. And their, I, I, I will say, by the way, that uh, existence of Georgia is... Uh, big time do it to to Russia to Russia's involvement that's also factual by the way if not Russia then uh, current territory of Georgia probably would be part of Turkey and people there will speak Turkish uh, some of them probably will remember that uh, you know sometime you know some centuries ago uh, they speak different language, they speak Georgian, but uh, no longer. And I'm saying this because uh, this already happened. In, uh, in uh, northern, western parts of Turkey, by the way, there are millions of ethnic Georgians. <coughs> millions of ethnic Georgians. And uh, some of people know that they are descendants of Georgians. Uh, some don't. Some people speak few Georgian words, but majority don't and many of them are turkish nationalists like erdogan himself he is ethnic georgian also <laughs> so yes existence of modern georgia by the way is uh, is uh, is uh, has something to do with russia for sure i will not say that it's 100 percent because of the russia uh, but uh, without russia georgia wouldn't will will not exist and therefore, and therefore, I'm saying if if current Tbilisi, uh, uh, current government of Georgia will manage to uh, 
who have good relationships, good working relationships with Moscow, if they will be pragmatic, then Georgia is safe. They will withstand the Western pressure, pressure of the Western ruling class. And, and manage to go through these hard times, for sure. Ria Novosti is reporting that, uh, well, uh, foreign policy, by the way, quite influential uh, media outlet in the, in the US, uh, come up with the article that uh, if uh, two key countries, according to this media outlet, in uh, Global South will join uh, BRICS, well, that will be bigger, bigger uh, uh, problem for, uh, for Washington. And these two countries are Thailand and Malaysia. Malaysia. And uh, you know what is uh, the interesting stuff here? Both countries applied for, <laughs> for a BRICS membership. Both. Thailand and Malaysia, they are all both applied to become members of the BRICS and most likely will become members of the BRICS uh, when time is right. Uh, we all remember that Russian foreign minister just a couple of weeks ago stated that for now BRICS is uh, taking a pause when it comes to accepting new members. Uh, some work will be done inside the organization uh, and uh, sometime in the future new members will be accepted also and i guess uh, thailand and Mal Ma malaysia they are both uh, in the position to uh, join the BRICS in a relatively short time after that so yes financially sir uh, not financial times but requiemas uh, foreign policy by the way foreign policy is uh, not happy not happy with uh, with BRICS. <laughs> okay Ria Novosti's report that US uh, is increasing uh, purchases of uh, Russian uranium, which is a bond, by the way. Biden's administration banned exports of the Russian uranium, but uh, they are still buying it. So according to this uh, information, uh, US in May purchased uh, in Russia enriched uranium for uh, $209 million. This is a maximum since the March of the last year. So, interesting, isn't it? Interesting. They ban exports, uh, imports of the Russian uranium. And they are trying to create some barriers for every country in this world to have any business with uh, Roscosmos. But they themselves buy Russian uranium, despite the ban. I mean, who cares? Now, there can be exceptions, you know. This is approach, by the way, of the Western ruling class. Uh, they have a one set of rules for themselves, which is uh, no rules at all. And they have uh, strict rules for others that everyone's supposed to follow. That's the Western ruling class for you. Right? Anyways, anyways, I will end this uh, update on this interesting news uh, and uh, well relatively long video but hopefully you'll find it informative uh, interesting useful maybe a little entertaining also that would be great and uh, well if so if if you like this uh, video please uh, please click that like button leave some commentary just about uh, anything uh, let's let's deal with the algorithm you know let's fight back uh, and the likes and comments are only way we can do it. And also, also, if you can, please share information about my channel with your friends uh, in real life or in the internet on the platforms that you are actively using. And uh, as I already mentioned, if you're uh, considering to support my work, uh, all the links uh, are under this video in the description box and in the pinned comment. This is it for now. Have a great day, wonderful weekend, and. Take care.